One of the main differences between machines and humans is that humans are able to learn from their past experiences. Machines, on the other hand, need to be given specific instructions on what to do. But there is a way to make machines learn from past data, like humans, and even faster. This is where machine learning comes in. So, this is Fred. Fred loves to watch new movies. After each movie, he rates them either good or bad. He rates the movies based on the soundtrack, plot, dialogue, and acting. Let us use two out of these factors for simplicity. This is a graph of the movie plots against the acting, with plots on the y-axis and acting on the x-axis. The acting ranges from relaxed to intense, while the plot ranges from predictable to suspense. From the graph, we can see that Fred likes movies with intense acting and suspense, and he dislikes movies that are predictable with relaxed acting. Now we have known Fred's movie preference. As you mean Fred watches a new movie, let's say movie one, with intense acting and suspense. On the graph, the movie will fall around here. Looking at the data we have, from Fred's past preference, can you tell if he would like or dislike movie 1? Yeah, Fred likes the movie. We have been able to classify the new movie based on what we have learned from Fred's past choices. Let's say again that Fred watches another movie, call it movie 2, and movie 2 lies somewhere here, with medium plot and medium acting, that is, neither predictable or high suspense, neither relaxed or intense acting. Can you guess whether Fred would like the movie or not? Now, the choice has become complicated because of the in-between factors, so we are not able to determine Fred's choice for movie 2 as easily as we did for movie 1. This is where machine learning comes in. Using the same example, if we are to draw a circle around movie 2, there are 5 dots for good and 2 dots for bad. Going by the majority of dots closest to movie 2, we could say that Fred would rate the movie good. This is one of the basic machine learning algorithms called the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. And there are many machine learning algorithms. What we just did seemed very easy because we had fewer choices. What now happens when the choices become complicated, like classifying emails under spam or not? Machine learning learns the data based on the prediction model, and when the new data point comes in, it can easily predict or decide. Which means that the more data fed to the model, the better the model gets and the higher the accuracy of the results. There are three ways that a machine can learn. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Let's look at supervised learning. In supervised learning, a model is trained to make predictions based on labeled data. This is what I mean. Let's say a friend gives a stack of medals of three different materials, one gold, one silver, and one bronze. And each medal has a different weight. The gold weighs 10 grams, silver weighs 7 grams, and bronze weighs 5 grams. If our model is to predict the material of the medal, the weight becomes the feature of the medals while the material becomes the label. When we feed this data to the machine learning model, it learns which feature is associated with which label. For example, it will learn that if a medal weighs 5 grams, it is a bronze medal. So in summary, Supervised learning uses labeled data to train a model. Some real-life applications of supervised learning include speech recognition. Many voice assistants such as Siri from Apple and Alexa from Amazon use supervised learning algorithms to process spoken commands. Spam filters. Many email clients use supervised learning algorithms to filter out spam emails. The algorithms are trained on a data set of labeled emails and use this information to predict whether an email is spam or not. Image classification and recognition. 
many image recognition systems such as those used by social media platforms to automatically tag photos use supervised learning algorithms to classify images based on their content fraud detection many financial institutions use supervised learning algorithms to identify fraudulent activities next is unsupervised learning in unsupervised learning a model is trained to group unlabeled data according to similarities and distinct patterns in the data set. For example, let's say we have a data set of various fruits and we fit this unlabeled data to the model. The model then groups the data according to their similarities. In this case, same shape, same color. The main point in unsupervised learning is that there is no label data saying that this is an apple or this is what an apple looks like and this is what a banana looks like. Some real life applications of unsupervised learning include medical imaging for distinguishing between different kinds of tissues, marketing research where customers are grouped and differentiated based on some attributes, and recommendation systems such as in Amazon where you are giving better suggestions on what to buy based on what you've bought recently and um, also used by Netflix and some other movie applications where suggestions are given to you based on what you've watched recently. Then there is reinforcement learning where a model learns how to solve goal-oriented problems over multiple steps. Simply put, it's a trial and error method that works with the principle of feedback. Let's say you provide the model with the image of an apple and ask it to identify it. The model identifies it as a mango, so a negative feedback is returned to the model saying that it's an apple. The model will learn from this feedback and whenever it comes across the image of the apple again, it will correctly identify it as an apple. That is reinforcement learning. Some real life applications of reinforcement learning are in self-driving cars, automated robots, trading and finance, natural language processing, automated medical diagnosis, and of course in gaming. To summarize all we've said about machine learning, let's use a flow diagram. Input is given to a machine learning model which then produces output according to the algorithm applied. If it is right, we take the output as the final result. If not, we provide feedback to the training model and ask it to predict until it learns. To see how much we've learned, let's do a quick quiz. What type of machine learning do these cases fall under? Case 1. An email client identifies a new email as a spam. Case 2. Amazon suggests a, a new product for you to buy based on products that you have purchased previously. Case 3. A financial system predicts stock prices and decides whether to hold, buy or sell. Think about your answer and please comment below. Machine learning is in rapid progression these days due to the large amount of data available. People in every part of the world are online performing one task or the other, and that generates a huge amount of data per second. This data is the key to analysis. Also, the memory of computers has tremendously increased, which makes it possible to process large amounts of data at a time with very minimal delay. Thanks for watching, and remember to leave your comments on interesting everyday applications of machine learning around you.